So I thought I'd just go through and sort of show you my process for um, how I work on an animated short film. Um, so the way I did this uh, this film basically was entirely in Blender, and I thought I'd take you through the process sort of start to finish. So it all starts sort of with some uh, rough ideas and concepts, um, which I then try and take into a previs sort of as soon as possible. So uh, this is the previous file, so it basically has all the shots just sort of in one file, um, and this file is extremely messy and everything's sort of just thrown together really roughly. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the animation is just sort of really rough. It has the rough shot composition in that we want and all that kind of stuff. Um, just some, some proxy buildings as cubes. But you'll notice as I, as I sort of go through this, a lot of the shots are pretty much what we end up seeing in the final film. So, you know, there's a real benefit to, to doing this process. Let me show you the, um, the videos I've gone through, the iterations of the story that happened here. So really early on, um, I was looking at this kind of stuff, which was much more, um, uh, light based. And the idea was that the, the story would be told with light more. Um, but I ended up just not really, not really feeling this idea and uh, going for something simpler, but you know, there's a whole lot of, a whole lot of previews that's happened here. Um, I did actually start with a wolf model, um, but as you can see, like it has no eyes in this. It's really roughly rigged, and it's not not like the final look at all. So um, yeah, it's also missing a nose, but it's just these kind of um, really rough three D blockings that help me visualize how the film will feel, and you start to realize what doesn't work, and in that, quite a lot didn't work. So. <laughs> Uh, I kept iterating on it, and um, the path that sort of started with the closest uh, reference to the final film is this path. Um, as you can see, the light's still sort of involved in this one, um, and we still have this this theme running through it. But really, the um, the main core of the film is here. Yeah, and this is all just like rendered really quickly in Eevee and really rough models, like nothing should take you more than 10 minutes to model, minus your character. I did spend quite a lot of time modeling the character, um, which probably isn't advisable to be honest, but I knew I was going to use this wolf no matter what, so I thought may as well just model the final thing straight up. This is probably the closest to the final film. Yeah, it has all those key beats in. The light's no longer a theme. The timing's much closer. Yeah, this whole sequence with the close-up and everything. And this new ending as well. Yeah, this one really, really, um, really hit home for me, I think. I think this was the kind of look I really wanted to go for. Um, and you'll notice this is very similar to the actual film that I ended up with. So, yeah, I pretty much decided just to develop it from here. But just to give you an idea, um, that's where we ended up after probably a month of a month of work thinking about what I wanted to do with it. Um, and this is where we where we started. <laughs> um, really rough scribbles. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to just scribble your ideas down if you if you have an idea for how something might flow. Um, yeah, just get it down and you can work on refining it in 3D later. At least that's my process. And sometimes, yeah, I'll even just put walls of text in if I have an idea for a shot, but I didn't get a drawing down. Um, I'll just put that in just for my own reference so I can sort of roughly get a feel for timing and that kind of thing. So this was uh, still trying to establish the sort of uh, the look of the tree and uh, rocks and that kind of thing. And so I, I decided to just sort of roll this out basically and start building the environment. With this kind, of, with, with this tree and a, maybe a couple of variations of this tree. Part of my modeling process for this dog was to actually just start with the main loops that I wanted, so I didn't actually sculpt him. I just started with the proper topology, um, and that saved a lot of time, really. I think. Yeah, I'm also uh, much more confident in regular modeling than I am with uh, with sculpting as well. So I just worked to my strengths there. I did two variations of the tree. Um, you might think 
I need more. But really, um, given that you can look at this from every angle and, you know, you can rotate it around and everything, there's not really a need to do more than two because, well, two or three I would recommend. But you sort of uh, don't get the impression that anything's ever repeating when you rotate and scale stuff um, in proper ways. So I'll show you what I mean. If I go into one of the production files, I'll go into say the uh, where I did all the set work was in the layout file here. Yeah, you can see I oh I did actually end up modding these little like uh, really simple. It's just a, a cube with one subdivision surface on it, and then just a cylinder for these uh, these more graphic shapes in the forest. But you know, you can't really see that much repetition if you just rotate scale and um, position things like that. But, you know, this whole stage of, of building the set is really important and it's worth spending a lot of time doing. Yeah, just continually iterating on this kind of thing really, really helped me. Um, yeah, these kind of like little graphic, um, little graphic like wood chippings and um, bits of grass poking out from the ground kind of to help bring it all together these low poly rocks all really simple stuff just um trying to position it with with some design in mind and yeah for this water i just have this sort of low poly plane that i uh, use a decimate modifier on a simple subdivision and um you can sort of control the amount of uh, polygons there and then just uh, doing this random face stuff for the shading and also just doing this whole setup is just like a basic displace modifier basically just to push and pull it up so you have a little bit of motion there nothing too crazy though trying to keep everything with a nice papery or wooden feel it's quite a nice way of doing this um i also use the real-time compositor in this workflow a lot just sort of uh, doing some color grading and saturation changes, a bit of mist, um, and some film grain over the top and stuff. It's been really nice using the real-time compositor, actually. I actually didn't render it from this. Um, we ha I, I, I built a lighting file, so... Yeah, I put all this uh, environment stuff in a collection called set, and then in a lighting file, um, I'll bring it in um, just as like a collection instance here so it all comes in as one and then um, I can light it like that and the reason for doing that is it just simplifies it in my brain a little bit so that I can um, you know keep it keep it fairly fairly simple and keep the animation separate and the set separate and everything but really you could you could do it however you wanted to um, it's just my personal preference when working really this was the first sort of shot that I that I animated um, and I'll go back to the first version so you can see how it started sort of in layout um, sort of working from the previous um, you know the the rough 3d blocking I've done before but you can see this is far from you know what it ended up as um, but you know it was enough to get into an edit and sort of um, tell the story and really I was looking at how the character is going to move through the environment on this pass but yeah then you you knuckle down and you <laughs> you focus on doing a lot of animation and yeah you end up with something like this so I was previewing it in Eva here but yeah it's just basically trying to look at reference of how like uh, dogs move and that sort of playful nature and yeah just trying to give it a sense of life and fun and action and all that kind of stuff i always, always animate a bit extra than what i think i'm going to use in the edit like i actually cut around here i think but it's nice just to give yourself a little bit of extra time at the start and the end uh, this butterfly really simple just um these really basic shapes with the wood shader on them and a really basic rig just to move the wings up and down there um yeah really try not to over complicate things just keep it nice and simple um yeah and then uh, a nice thing about having stuff all in separate files is i can link in the lighting and the environment and as i change stuff because it's all linked in it will update so that's pretty nice if you're working with other people um mainly i but yeah i'm just in that sort of habit so i i end up doing it for my own work too 
Uh, playing with the pose here, you'll see it's changed loads from the actual previous that I did. Um, yeah, the comp isn't quite right on this one either. Um, yeah, the viewport compositor I found it isn't always the most accurate. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not always the best, but it, it, it does usually get you pretty close, get the job done. But yeah, this um, this shot really defined the mood for this sort of section of the film for me. Just with the lighting and the sort of the much cooler palette versus the warmer palette at the start. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed working on this shot. Um, and the, the main thing with the lighting was just trying to have this sort of key, key light just sort of catching a little bit of him and making this nice graphic shape on the wall. And then the rest of it is just this really large point light, which is just acting as a sort of fill light. So a nice cool point light and a nice warm key light um, worked quite nicely here, I think. Yeah, and just in terms of the animation on this one, it was it was quite tricky, but the way I approached it was I found a nice pose of him lying down here, and then um, I knew I had to get him from basically this pose to this pose, so I um, had, had him do a couple steps and then sort of thought how he might twirl himself around and lie down and sort of wrap that tail in and, stuff, and that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, really just, um, if something, if a shot feels overwhelming, it can just help to just start on it and, and just see how you, how you might get between those two poses. So once stuff, each shot was working, I, um, rendered them out and brought them into an edit here where I have all my sound that I mix and I cut some of the frames down, like, like here, for example, and Pretty much every shot has frames cut out of it, um, just so I can make sure everything flows nicely together. And here I actually brought in the previews as well, like um, just in the top corner here, just so I can keep track of um, the timing of the previews and make sure that my actual film is sort of lining up with that, because I really like the timing in the previews, and that's why it's so useful to do. Because uh, even though I ended up not using that file in the final production, it, it served as really great reference for myself um, and it kept me on track but I would have this have this edit open as I sort of went along and each time I made an update to something I would drop it in like you can see here like the I, I might just render a, a play blast out and the lighting um, before before I did the lighting pass just so I could uh, get the timing right in the edit and everything I mean yeah that was that's pretty much the whole film um, the process could seem quite, quite simple, but at the same time, there's there's a lot that goes into it. And if you are going to try and make your own film, it's really important just to persevere with it and get that previews done first, so you have an end goal. You know what the film's going to be like. You know how it's going to end. You know everything, every part of that film. There's obviously a lot of creative decisions that go into everything, and a lot of uh, grinding through the stages that you don't necessarily want to get through. And even though this is a really short film, um, I wanted to put a lot of effort and a lot of love into each shot. So, you know, doing each environment sort of bespokely and all the animation bespokely and, and just trying to light it um, really nicely and everything. Get the best possible image for each shot out. So it, it can take a little while, but I would just say, you know, have patience with it and uh, eventually you'll get there.